Hi. So the other questions which come out is regarding the pacemaker. When we implant a pacemaker to the patients, the relatives and the patient per se has a lot of questions about pacemakers. Like can they go through the scanners of the malls, airports? Do Can they handle the mobile phone? Is there any restriction of using electricity at the home? Can I work in an electricity board? Or can I use the electrical instruments? Can I use an uh, cooking related like uh, grinder and so on, micro oven and so on. So let me give a brief introduction of what pacemaker is and what are the do's and don'ts in these post pacemaker patients. Pacemaker is actually a small wire or a lead which is placed inside the heart and connected to a battery cum programmer which is kept just below the collarbone on the left side preferably. So this is used in cases where the patient has very very slow heart rate and their heart rate is not optimal. Normally we would have heard that the one's heartbeat is around 72 beats per minute. So generally it varies between 60 to 100 beats per minute. If somebody has less than 40, the usually heart is not able to beat at a rate which is optimal enough to ensure the blood supply to the other organs is preserved. So on the bargain, what would happen is they would uh, start having syncopal episodes because the brain may not receive the blood supply at an optimal rate. So in these patients, we would put a pacemaker which would start monitoring the patient's own heart rate and whenever the patient's heart rate is not optimal, it would give electrical stimulation to the heart so that the heart can beat. So that's a function of pacemaker. Putting it in simpler terms, it is going to fill up the blanks whenever the heart is blanked out, it will fill in with an electrical activity. So since this is an electrical device, a lot of people have a lot of questions. Prior to 2014, most of these pacemakers were not MRI, MRI compatible. Post-2014, the pacemakers have been generally MRI compatible. Why are we talking about MRI compatibility? So most of the pacemakers would have been implanted in elderly patients. These patients can also have a future risk of stroke or if at all if they develop a stroke or some neck pain or a spondylosis, they would need MRI of a brain or a spine for a further evaluation of their neurological condition. So if at all if the pacemaker is not MRI compatible, then getting an MRI imaging for a neurological evaluation might be difficult or they may have to switch out the pacemaker, then get an MRI and then come back and then switch on and all these things. That's why like MRI compatible pacemakers have become one of the important aspect. So since most of the pacemakers which have been put after 2014 are MRI compatible, people need not worry much about the MRI conditionality. But of course, yes, whenever somebody is planning for an MRI, it's always better to inform the cardiologist or a pacemaker team so that they can change certain pacing modality or programs so that everything can go smoothly. So the do's in the immediate post-procedure thing is not to move the left shoulder because our wound and the pulse generator of the pacemaker would have been just under the collarbone on the left side and movement of this would only impair the healing of that wound. Second is do not meddle with the pacemaker per se which can be filled just below the collarbone. Third is do not lie always. So just get around because this is a procedure which has been done just below the clavicle. You can still be ambulant. Don't lie down on the bed for the longer time just because you had a pacemaker. Even though we say restriction of the shoulder movement should be there, we do allow the movement of the hands and also the elbow. This should be done regularly. Do not pour water or a soap on the spoon till it gets completely healed. So generally it would take around 15 days for the wound to heal completely, post which all kinds of movements of the shoulder can be done, except for one moment where the hand has to be lifted really heavily above the head to lift some weight or so. Simple lifting of the hand is not a problematic, but if you have to take some objects from the shelf or something, that is one thing which you, which you should avoid from the left hand. So generally what we say is though these are electrically safe and the routine domestic current or electrical 
appliances does not affect any of your routine uh, pacemaker activities you can do all these things but we would suggest that you should avoid standing under a bigger transmitters the heavy weight or heavy electricity binded transmitters for a longer time also when you are going through the airport scanners and then so you just tell them that you have a pacemaker though the current devices are compatible with most of the scanners it's always better to inform the airport authorities or the mall authorities saying that you have a pacemaker and they would take you by the side even if you had to travel across the scanners nothing would happen so people with the pacemaker also have to take care of another thing like if they have to undergo any surgery wherein some cautery has to be used to control the bleeding they need to inform the pacemaker team so that it can be reprogrammed to a modality where it does not interfere with the cautery these are the simple do's and don'ts if you have any other question we can always answer it out in person